The month of July is slated to become the world's hottest month, shattering every other earlier record. The trend of extreme heat is evident all across the world. Greece's capital Athens is also bracing for the hottest July weekend in 50 years, with temperatures forecast to soar above 40 degrees Celsius. Relentless wildfires in the country are forcing tens of thousands of people to evacuate from the popular islands of Rhodes and Corfu. Other nations in southern Europe, such as Italy, Spain and France, are sweltering in a record-breaking heatwave. Heat has even caused several deaths across the globe. A desert valley in eastern California called the Death Valley is one of the hottest places on the planet. Recently, the valley saw the death of a 71-year-old hiker who collapsed shortly after completing a hike and being interviewed about the blazing heat. This year on the 6th of July, the Earth's average temperature set a new unofficial record high. The planetary average hit 17.23 degrees Celsius. It was the third such milestone in a week that already rated as the hottest on record. Average global temperature on the 4th of July was 17.18 degrees Celsius. One day earlier on the 3rd of July, it was 17.01 degrees Celsius. All these temperatures surpassed the last record of August 2016 of 16.92 degrees Celsius when heat waves sizzled around the world. According to climate information from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, the average temperature on Earth lies somewhere around 57 degrees Fahrenheit or 13.9 degrees Celsius, measured across land and ocean, night and day. With the world's average temperature reaching new records and still rising, 2023 may become the hottest year. Let's see how scorching heat is continuing to hit parts of the world. In the US, the southwest region has been baking under hotter than normal temperatures. Parts of Arizona have seen temperatures of 43.3 degrees Celsius every day this month. Temperatures in South Texas recently soared to 48 degrees Celsius. Extreme weather is rewriting records in China too. A township in the country's arid northwest endured temperatures of more than 52 degrees Celsius. In India, a southwestern coastal state, Kerala, recorded 120 deaths due to a heat wave so far this year. It is the highest number of such deaths in the country. Southern Europe continues to experience fierce heat. 20 cities across Italy have been issued red alerts. And even the continent at the bottom of the world, Antarctica, which is currently in its winter season, has registered unusually high temperatures. The white continent's Argentine islands recently broke its temperature record with 8.7 degrees Celsius. Experts expect more such record-breaking events in the future. Why is Europe becoming a heatwave hotspot? Which countries are vulnerable to heat waves? And what must be done to prevent it? Let's find out. As we've seen, heat waves are ripping all through Europe, the United States, and Asia. The heat has sparked intense wildfires, threatening homes and livelihoods across the world. But what is a heat wave? A heat wave is defined by the Meteorological Office, United Kingdom's National Weather Service, as an uninterrupted period of exceptionally high temperatures. There's a threshold temperature for it to be described as a heat wave, and it is different for different countries. 
the threshold has to be exceeded for three days in a row for it to be called a heat wave. If it doesn't last three days, it's simply referred to as a hot spell. Summer heat waves are becoming longer, stronger and more frequent. But is it something one should expect to see more often in the future? Millions of people are dealing with extreme heat waves as it continues to raise temperatures to unhealthy levels. From one of the world's most impoverished regions to southern Europe, Greece's heat wave is set to become the longest in the country's recorded history. The latest heat wave comes at one of the busiest times for the country's tourism industry. People have been advised to stay home and tourist sites, including Athens' ancient Acropolis, were shut during the hottest parts of the day. We lost everything, our fields, our homes, all, all. I don't know. The situation, the situa situation have changed. Meanwhile, firefighters have been battling dozens of wildfires burning across Greece. These are scenes from the island of Rhodes, one of Greece's most popular vacation destinations. On the 23rd of July, over 30,000 locals and tourists had to be evacuated. We were around the pool yesterday, saw the fires. One o'clock, the police came into our reception and told everyone to get onto the beach. So we ran down to the beach. Um, we just sat there for 15 minutes, half an hour, and then more smoke come over. So we were told to move along to the beach, and just keep walking. So we were walking for about six hours in the heat. We went to the stadium for somewhere to stay and I couldn't believe the stories I was hearing from the people who've been evacuated from hotels. All their money, passports, clothing. We had to lend a woman some of my wife's clothes because she had nothing to wear. It was terrible. The roads fire roared down mountain slopes, burning homes and cars. It prompted the biggest evacuation in Greek history. Wildfires are also sweeping other Greek islands. Crete, the largest and most populous one, is also at extreme risk of raging wildfires. While Corfu, another popular destination, has been enduring dozens of blazes. On the 24th of July, locals from the wildfire-ravaged village of Kiotari on the Greek island of Rhodes called for help after retreating to the beach. They feared for their homes as the flames threatened. We evacuated the village. Now some houses are on fire. And we came down here. We don't know what to do. That's the situation. Now the, fi no, uh, the fire is going uh, from the other village, Gennady, to Vati. And it's on fire five days now. And they have no control of the fire. We need help. So anybody from outside hearing, send help. Our houses maybe not be there tomorrow, maybe an hour are on fire, we don't know what to do. A group of locals were seen carrying seawater to fill a tank placed on a truck to help put out the fires. Horrifying scenes were seen across the island. The fires left trees black and skeletal, while wild animals lay on the road near burnt-out cars.
Red alerts for extreme heat have been issued in most of Italy's main cities. The warnings mean the heat poses a threat to everybody, not just vulnerable groups. Yet pilgrims and tourists brave Rome's sweltering heat for a glimpse of Pope Francis, with temperatures soaring in the Italian capital. It's been very hot here since we arrived. We're finding it hard to get used to it, especially as we've only just arrived. And we've realized that it's hotter here than it is at home in Africa. The heat goes on well into the night, and sometimes we even find it hard to sleep. As Italy bakes under an intense heat wave, a zoo in Rome has taken steps to help the animals cope with the extreme heat. The zookeepers are offering frozen treats filled with fruit, vegetables or meat to the zoo's inmates as a way of keeping them cool. An intense heat wave has also gripped Spain. Wildfires continue to burn on the Spanish Canary Island of La Palma. More than 4,000 residents were forced to flee their homes. In southern Spain, the intense summer heat is disrupting vineyards. At the Bodegas Robles Winery in Montilla, grape pickers work in the early hours of the morning to avoid the day's heat. During the day in the field, because the temperatures are 45 to 55 degrees, it is impossible to do agricultural work. What we've decided and what we have been doing for several years now is to start at 4 in the morning or at 5 in the morning when the temperature is pleasant and finish at 11. Despite the sweltering heat, Spaniards stepped out of their homes and took part in an election that many saw as ill-timed in the middle of summer. On the 23rd of July, voters in southern Spain braved the heat to cast their ballots. In the city of Ronda, a polling station was equipped with a big mobile air conditioning machine to help voters stay cool through the day. <laughs> Citizens across Europe are finding different ways to beat the heat. Natural sunscreen to the rescue. This surprising site is from Queen's Beach. It's the most famous beach in the town of Nin, Croatia. Ditching their sunscreens, locals and tourists slathered themselves in mud. Apparently, it's an age-old trick to prevent sunburn. I decided on mud because of the skin problems I have. If it didn't help, I wouldn't have been coming here for 20 years. You can't compare it with the protection factor of sunscreen. With mud, there is just no chance of getting sunburned. But it's strenuous. A pretty messy affair indeed. And then there was this. a safe haven underwater. With temperatures setting records, scuba diving into the depths of the Adriatic Sea has become one of the rarest solutions for people escaping soaring temperatures. Tourists who embarked on a small boat alongside the island of Vir are raving about the opportunity to escape the heat. Some diving two days in a row after a refreshing dip. 
first of all, diving is fun. Yeah? <laughs> and um, down there, it's a lot cooler than on the land. So. Uh, and we dove the day before yesterday and was really nice and relaxing. And so we decided to do it again today. Yeah, it's a lot cooler down there. Yeah, there, There's some shift. I don't know at which depth, but then the temperature drops really. It's warmer than the last years, but uh, it's still refreshing. In this summer of extremes, intense heat is gripping large parts of the Northern Hemisphere. The heat wave has been plaguing vast stretches of the southern United States and the forecast is that it will continue in areas that have been burning for weeks. The fast-growing homeless population of Phoenix is one of the worst hit by the record heat wave hitting the city of Arizona. For the 19th continuous day, daytime temperatures in Phoenix remained above 43.3 degrees Celsius, breaking a heat record that was made 50 years ago. When the sun goes down and I walk up the street to the store, about six blocks up, there's no way I can walk to the store right now. I won't make it. It's too hot. It's not enough. I don't have enough water or whatever I need inside of me because I've been homeless and being neglected through my nutrients, to walk to the store means death. And who wants, that, that shouldn't be an issue here in America. Decide whether you should walk to the store or stay in the shade because you're gonna die. As Arizona battles a relentless heat wave, the Phoenix Zoo has taken measures to keep its animals safe. Zookeepers have been creating a variety of frozen treats from vegetable-filled ice cubes for horses to frozen grapes for monkeys. These treats help the animals cool down and stay hydrated. On the 16th of July, temperatures soared up to 53 degrees Celsius in the California desert. Also, in waters around Florida, ocean temperatures have soared 5 degrees above the normal since early July. The ocean heat has scientists worried about cascading disasters. Besides exacerbating the heat on land, it could lead to coral bleaching and even hurricanes. The intense heat waves across Asia have shown no signs of abating. Beijing broke a 23-year-old record with 27 consecutive days of temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius. In China's southwestern municipality of Chongqing, 127 cooling shelters have been put up across railway stations. The shelters are equipped with air conditioning, free water and even medicine to combat heat stroke. And the flaming mountains in northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region saw a staggering 80 degrees Celsius surface temperature. Despite the scorching heat wave, tourists flocked to the scenic spot to experience the extreme heat firsthand. Today I have come to the legendary flaming mountains, experiencing the highest temperature in my life. Amid a record-breaking heat wave in China, people have found innovative ways to protect themselves from the sun, including the face kini, a full face mask made of UV-resistant fabric featuring holes for the eyes and nose. The summer's warming has coincided with the onset of the climate phenomenon called El Nino. The climate event, which in Spanish means little boy, refers to an abnormal warming of water in the Pacific Ocean. The waters in the Pacific Ocean alternate between a warm and cold phase every two to seven years. The cold phase, or La Nina, usually has opposite impacts compared to El Nino. This year, climate pattern has returned for the first time in four years. It causes more intense heat waves, more powerful storms, and prolonged hot seasons. There is something called as the El Nino Southern Oscillation, which is basically, to put in a very simple word, so that deals with the 
anomalous warming of the parts of Pacific Ocean that's close to the uh, equator. And that just dumps a lot of heat in the atmosphere. So we know that the Earth naturally heats up when we are into this El Nino phase, which is now happening. So next summer is going to be challenging. But again, we don't know specifically right now which areas would be hot. But uh, but that's what is going to happen. Like, you know, each and every year, that's, that's just going to be a bit of a challenge in terms of high temperatures and heat waves. The dangerously high temperatures of the summers of 2023 are also a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of climate change. Yes, the background for this is um, the climate change, which increases the temperature overall. But added to that, of course, the short-term effects of the El Nino and short-term weather effects, which brings up the temperature in Europe right now. But you have seen the same. Uh, right now we're seeing the same in Arizona, Nevada and southwest of the United States. As the planet continues to get warmer, extreme heat events like the one we've seen will become more frequent and more severe. The alarm bells are ringing.